This is it. This is it. Tuloy, ayo tuloy. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. This is it, guys. This is it. Welcome to the latest podcast slash vlog slash slash bardagulan slash heart to heart. Yan, magsimula na tayo ng mga heart to heart. By the way, shout out dyan sa mga ka-gym natin kanina. Yan, si Sir Jared ba yung pangalan? Ano, anong tinagan ni Mesa? Farel, Jarrett, yan. Yung mga kasama natin dyan sa gym. Hello sa inyo. Maraming salamat. Nakikinig pala sa atin yung iba dyan. So good to know. Good to know may mga kabataan. Medyo kabataan din nakikinig sa atin. So it's always a pleasure to see na we're expanding itong reach natin. Of course, katulad ng pinost natin isang araw, chinig natin. Guys, pumapasok na rin tayo sa top 100 sa Singapore, sa Japan, pati sa Ireland. Guys, pumapasok tayo sa top 100 sa news and politics podcast. Of course, sa Pilipinas. Alam niyo naman sino mga ilabanan, di ba? For number one, I'm always glad with healthy competition. Ay, okay yung mga unhealthy competition. And of course, uh, alam naman natin sa Asia, sa Southeast Asia, isa tayo sa mga best ranked, uh, thank God, podcast. So we want to make this one of the leading podcasts in Asia and nice to see. Uh, hindi naman ako nag-feeling. Sa, sa aking palagay siguro yung mga, yung mga nagpataas ng rankings natin sa Ireland, sa Singapore, sa um sa Japan among others alam ko mga ka, mga kababayan natin yan may mga nag-comment by the way nung nasa Kyoto yata ako or Nagoya or then nasa Osaka na yata ako by this time kung meron daw fans meeting diyan sa Japan guys hindi pa ako ganun ka big time pa sana naman pag medyo big time na tayo arrange natin yan pero guys i always look forward to catching up with mga kametas Every time I had an opportunity to meet some kametas in some events international conference i, I tell you guys Naka, ano, uh, naka-hearten, di ba? To, to, to say the least. So, thank you so much sa lahat ng ating mga kababayan, mga kametas na sumusuporta sa ating podcast, making us among the leading podcast, political podcast in the region and beyond. So, sana tuloy-tuloy yan. Italy, Ireland, uh, Singapore, Japan. Hopefully, uh, one day, di ba? Makapasok din tayo dyan sa Amerika, di ba? Sa top 100 podcast, news, news and politics podcast sa Amerika. Pat nagawa natin yan. Ito na, pwede na tayo mag-Hollywood. Pwede na tayo mag-Hollywood. Hindi, <laughs> pero seryoso guys. Super, super salamat sa inyong suporta. Ah. This is this is really, really heartening. And of course, naalan din naman dun sa... Meron din tayong mga reviews on some of the um, podcasts, international rankings and all, including reviews from Australia and mga other countries. So, I'm, I'm more than... Uh, I feel more than a privilege and humble to see na meron tayong reach... Beyond our own nation, beyond our own uh, horizons, na at pati mga dayuhan. Mukhang uh, put, uh, put, eh, mga Australians sa atang, ano, eh, hindi, hindi Pilipino eh, kasi English yung ano, eh, um, more a basis nila yung ating um, geopolitical analysis. So I'm very, very glad to see that a, a distinctly Pinoy perspective uh, is gaining traction all around the world. And yun talagang guys, hope natin na maging isa tayo sa mga boses. ng uh, Pilipinas, boses ng mga Global South at mga emerging countries sa Asia. Para hindi lang purong mga alam niyo na mga Western countries or hindi lang purong China, di ba? Or India, yung mga malaking bansa. Sana tayo rin, mga mid-range, mid, mid, uh, mga mid-sized countries, magkakaroon tayo, din tayo ng boses. So I'm glad to see na there's appreciation of our geopolitical analysis. Obviously guys, kung you want to know more about my geopolitical writings and analysis, ito, good news today guys. Ito na, kakalabas lang sa Nikkei Asia. Uh, ito yung leading business uh, newspaper sa buong Asia and, um, and the biggest in the world. Lumabas yung article natin. So, so siguro ibang kababayan natin based in Indonesia or interesado sa politika sa Indonesia, they, ma- they may want to take a look at this. Ito po yung latest article natin ngayon sa Nikkei Asia. Prabowo, ito yung newly elected uh, president ng Indonesia and the outgoing defense minister. Ito po yung title, title, uh, title ng art, article natin. Prabowo followed Marcos' election pay, playbook for better or worse. So, tinignan ko yung uh, similarities, guys. Similarities between elections in, in Indonesia and sa elections in uh, in the Philippines. So, unang-una, I, I, I described the Indonesian elections as a TikTok revolution. Dahil nakita natin dyan sa uh, Indonesian uh, elections talaga gumamit ng ano eh. <laughs> Parang... Talagang mala BBM yung ginawa. Kung si BBM naman ay cool uncle, BTS hairstyle, 
V-cut bomber jacket style na BTS ganun. Si Prabo naman sa TikTok niya. Uh, ang ginawa niya naman, yung parang cutie, lolo, tatay, ganun pa yung uh, branding sa kanya. No? So, so may, mga, may mga chismis dyan sa Jakarta, galing sa mga kaibigan natin na mukhang pareho or may overlap yung PR team ni BBM at saka yung PR team ni Prabowo, Subianto ng Indonesia. So, I have to confirm that myself. But this is very, very interesting. But the other thing that I found very interesting is parehong bansa may uni team. And the composition of the uni team is almost exactly the same. So sa Pilipinas, it was Marcos Jr., anak ng isang dating strongman, to put it mildly, at ang anak ng outgoing authoritarian populist or populist president, in this case, Sara Duterte. Pagdating naman sa um, sa Indonesia, nangyari mga kameta is Prabowo Subianto, yung dating son-in-law ng dating nilang diktador, si Suharto, and then ang katim niya yung anak na bata, uh, mas bata pa kay Sara Duterte, and Just like Sarah Duterte, very inexperienced in national politics, okay? National politics. Of course, Sarah had a lot of experience in Davao politics, regional politics, also to a certain degree, yung anak ni Jokowi. And in both countries, close to 60%, I think 58% in both countries. Uh, uh, so the numbers are almost exactly the same, right? Now, ibang usapan yung mga SD cards discussion and all. I'm not gonna get into it. Manood na lang kayo ng Bulljack TV, baka may makita kayong mga information dyan, all right? But so yun ang ina-analyze natin guys sa Nikkei Asia so please check it out. I uh, look at the very interesting similarities between Indonesia and the Philippines in their uh, latest elections on on Valentine's Day, February 13 bang Valentine's Day, 12 whatever uh, or 14. Uh, anyway, uh, so I also look at the possibility that Prabowo just like BBM may turn out as a relatively pleasant surprise or or not as scary, but I think I'm a little bit more skeptical even in the case of Indonesia. My sense is si Prabowo, mas malaki yung kanyang tendencies to push for a more authoritarian system, even more authoritarian than Jokowi, right? So please check this out. Kanina lang sinend natin ito dun sa mga advisors na mga, alam niyo na sino mga, yung mga top politicians sa Indonesia and all. So guys, please check this out. So yun po yung ginagawa natin dito sa um, ating podcast. We just don't discuss local issues. As yun na naman guys, primarily ang aking expertise ay international affairs global geopolitics at uh, economic issues. No? So yun po yung talagang yun, yung cover natin sa international uh, newspapers, international publications. So pakicheck dyan yung mga interviews din natin. You can check on, 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 on leading media outlets. Of course, hinintay ko pa rin yung link para i-share ko sa inyo. Marami sa natin, especially sa mga YouTubers natin. Pasensya guys sa TikTok ha. Kasi alanganin yung internet natin, di ko kaya nasabay nun. So also sa Deutsche Welle, sa Germany, The other day, nung nasa Osaka tayo, mag-12 midnight na, drain na drain na ako. Haba ng araw ko, 9 a.m. pa lang, ano, pumunta na ako para mag-samurai-samurai, mag, ano, katana, ganyan. No, 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 but um, thank you so much also dun sa mga nag-join sa stream, ayan, new, new program nila, new stream nila sa sa, sa sa Deutsche Welle. And of course, maraming salamat also sa mga kameta natin na who attended in person dun sa mga events natin dito sa Manila uh, the other week, both sa BBC World Questions. Uh, event, big event dyan sa Diamond Hotel. And of course, yung mga nag sa aking talk, Illustrado for the 21st Century, no? Uh, dyan naman sa Leon uh, Gallery, 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 uh, Leon Gallery, dyan sa Makati. Um, thank God, good news, may mga plano tayo for more lectures on Illustrados, more lectures on the golden era of the Philippines, and retrieving or, or kind of uh, going back to the past in order to get inspiration for a brighter future. Speaking of brighter future, guys, bago natin pag-usapan ng Kiboloy at uh, Duterte Saga, nako po, ang dami na naman nito. Um, may news kanina, kanina umaga, nakita natin na, eto na, speaking of Japan, yan, makalamatan natin Japan. Guys, eto na, eto na, mukhang talagang papunta na tayo sa exciting part in a good good way, ah, in a good way. Mamaya na natin pag-usapan papunta sa exciting part in a uh, malatatay way. Ito guys, uh, mukhang uh, tuloy-tuloy na itong subway, subway project ng Japan. Japan sa Pilipinas, Japan, Japan sa Gotsa, yan, Katrapikhan, tra, yan, okay. Alright, ito guys, uh, mukhang tuloy-tuloy, yung, yung ginagamit na lang yung parang worm, yan, yung parang worm sa dun, ganun, yung, yung gumagana. Ano pangalan ulit, technical pangalan nun? Oh, yun yung gumagawa ng underground, diba? Yung, yung, you have to make a hole in the ground, underground, para ma- yan, dadaling na dito malapit sa ETSA, so maging grabe yung traffic. 
So, sinabi ko nga kanina, hindi ko alam bad ginawa pa sa Friday. But, at least, it's a good news, guys. At least, it's a good news, guys. It's a good news na may gumagalaw. May gumagalaw na. May gumagalaw na sa... Um, in, Richard po ang pangalan ko, ma'am. Hindi Christian. <laughs> si Christian din dinatawag na Richard minsan. Ako dinatawag ako ni Christian. Since kailan kami naging interchangeable ni Lodi? Oh, kaya talaga ako. Oh. Sinisutil niyo ba kami or ano yan? Honest mistake. But anyway, balikan natin. Yeah, yeah, yan. Tunnel boring machine. Yan, boring kasi. Uh, eto, eto. Yun ang gagamitin nila para gumawa ng tunnel dyan. Yeah, yeah. Tunnel boring machine. Maraming sa lahat, guys. Doon sa mga nagsabi na. Um, yeah, so, so, things are moving. I mean, how should I say it? For all the frustrating things sa ating bansa, for all of the backwardness and katrapuhan which we're gonna discuss later on in spite of all of that guys medyo umu ano eh uh, medyo umaabante na tayo guys umaabante na tayo kung pumunta ka sa um sa um mega ay sa mall of asia area makikita mo may new completely expansion area na reclaimed and all na napakaganda yun lang purong pogo lang kasi diyan but hopefully one day hindi lang parang pogo ang mga dodgy nandiyan hopefully one day more of the Filipino middle class and new middle class will have um a place there to go although purong mga chinese company nag reclaim diyan um and then of course the infrastructure guys mukhang tuloy-tuloy na ito may news kanina guys ng uh, Lufthansa ng Alemania Salamat sa pagbisita ni, ni BBM sa Germany ay nag-agree na gagawa ng extra runway dun sa ginagawang uh, higante, world-class, multi-billion dollar airport. Uh, I think this is the one in Bulacan, no? if I'm not mistaken. Yan. So, um, so, things are moving, guys. Things are moving, guys. Next thing, you know, pagising mo, marami, mar- may bago na tayong airport, God willing na maganda, na world-class um Mamay pag tignan mo, magkakaroon tayo ng subway na world class among the best in the world. Build, build, build by Japan to guys. Eh. Build by Japan to. Yung ano naman, yung, yung design naman at saka yung mga uh, hangers na ginagawa naman dyan sa new airport natin. Germany at saka Korea naman yan. So medyo bigatin to mga to. Hindi yung mga beshi ni Tatay Digong. Uh, at, at speak of which guys, bago tayo pumunta kay Kiboloy at yung uh, impending arrest ni Kiboloy. Right? Um, China, China. We have to talk about China. Important ang China. Oh, yan TikTok. Oh, alam na this. Yan ang TikTok. No, 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 guys. We have to talk about China. But, but I want to say this, guys. I, I want to say this. Okay. Siyempre bilang isang Pinoy na, yeah, alam naman. I mean, siyempre nakaka-frustrate kung nag-abroad ka, nakikita mo na talagang grabe yung, uh, pag-angat ng mga kapitbahay natin in Vietnam. Grabe, over the past 5 to 10 years, grabe yung growth and progress nila. Dati, purong motorcycle lang nakikita ko sa Vietnam. Ngayon, just ko, purong mga... I see a lot of German cars, Benz, BMW. I saw Ferraris. But more importantly, I saw more VinFast, their own national cars. No? Um, Thailand, sobrang ahead na sa atin. Yung infrastructure nila, parang Tokyo style na double deck, triple deck. Oh, of course, Japan din na build sa kanila. Makarami yan yan. At yung per capita income nila is almost $10,000 na. So, more than twice the Philippines. Given in Malaysia, Singapore, sobrang ahead na sa atin. There's no point in even comparing. Um, and then, Indonesia rin, sobrang laki ng improvement nila. But guys, guys, I'll tell you, in spite of lahat ng kapalpakan ng mga gobyerno natin, in spite of all the tatay legacy, in spite of all of that, dahil sa pag natin lahat, yung mga FWs natin na bayani, yung mga middle class natin din sa Pilipinas, yung ating mga minamahal na uh, masang Pilipino, lahat tayo nag-contribute dito. Kasi yung ginagamit guys, yung subway na ginagawa ng Japan dito ay hindi libre. Ano yan? Galing sa ano yan, kaban ng bayan yung pagbayad natin dyan at babayaran natin yan dekada at dekada. Although, thanks naman sa Japan, uh, hindi mataas yung interest rate nila. Sobrang sub 1% yung interest rate nila. Minsan, barely above 0% ang interest rate nila. So, this is a strategic agreement that was signed MOA niya um, was signed, a memorandum of agreement was signed during the time of President Aquino in 2015 when pre, uh, former and the late, actually God bless both of them, no? Both of them have um, have already departed, um, uh, both President Aquino and Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, they signed this in 2015. And then, in fairness naman, I'll give credit to the, both the Duterte administration and now the BBM administration, they're continuing that subway project. 
Um, shout out dyan sa Department of Transportation. Hopefully one day, bigyan tayo ng tour dyan because I want to do some videos, I don't know, drone shots, I don't know, something nice about itong mga subway infrastructure projects natin dyan. But this is not to promote any government. This is about us, the Filipino people. We contributed to this. Now, may mga nagsabi dyan, si Jerry sabi na hindi ang ganang idea yung subway. I, I don't know, guys. You go to any modern country, at least may isa silang syudad na may subway. At least isang uh, Pilipinas nga, wala pang isang syudad, wala pang subway. Diba? Now, remember, this is Japan. So, they're gonna do proper feasibility studies, which they did. They're gonna do proper geological studies. They're gonna do proper flood control studies. So, hindi ito basta-basta. Kaya nga medyo matagal pag Japan ang gumagawa, tumatagal ng isang dekada among others dahil pinag-aralan talaga nila yung safety. At pinag-aralan talaga nila ano yung pinaka-modern 21st century. So actually, mamaya guys, if God willing, lalabas itong subway na to, baka mas maganda pa yung subway natin halos sa lahat ng mga kapitbahay natin. Because ours will be the latest edition of the Japanese subway. So I'm just saying, I'm just saying, kasi alam mo guys, For all of my frustration about the Philippines and our country, hindi actually, uh, in, not about our people, pero yung sa mga politiko natin, governance natin, guys, signal yung BGC. BGC was not there. I mean, ako medyo matanda akong millennial. So, I remember 15 years ago, purong parking lot na dun sa BGC, tas may konting mga embassy, Jaipur, Prince of Jaipur, yung mga ganyan na bars. That's it. Ngayon, grabe, isang syudad na siya, parang isang Dubai na siya, di ba? Punta ka naman dyan sa Mall of Asia area, isang Macau na siya, di ba? Now, obviously, ang problema sa atin, sa atin is ang laki ng growth. We are still the fastest growing economy in ASEAN, pero hindi siya inclusive. Kaya kahapon, kaya dun sa lahat ng podcast, ang sinasabi ko is kailangan mag-step up na si BBM, kailangan mag-step up yung mga ekonomista natin, kailangan natin kumuha ng mga investments sa manufacturing, semiconductors, high-end, para gumawa tayo ng mga trabaho na nagbibigay na magandang kabuhayan, nagbibigay ng kasiguraduhan, uh, security of tenure, nagbibigay ng magandang sahot, para ma-build up din natin, guys, yung um, yung ating uh, middle class. O, yan naman, sabi ni Sir Angel, um, uh, subway, bahayin. Kaya nga, kaya nga may siyensya po eh. Hindi naman ang Pilipinas ang tropical country na may subway eh. Ginagawa ng subway na yun sa maraming tropical countries. If I'm not mistaken, also Malaysia, some parts, I think they have like highways, na may flood control system sila. So guys, kaya ng siyensya yan. Kaya ng siyensya yan. As long as it's done properly. And as far as Japan is concerned, Japan is concerned, mas tiwala ako sa si Japan almost over any other country pagdating sa public infrastructure development. Because let's not forget, Japan has an experience of building infrastructure sa Philippines more than any other foreign country na big infrastructure. Tingnan mo sa ETSA. Tingnan mo sa... Uh, marami tayong mga major thoroughfare. Pag dinadaanan mo, makikita mo, Japan, Philippine Project. Japan, Philippine Project. So, I have a lot of confidence in Japan, relatively. Of course, walang perfecto. Uh, I'm still waiting for the final project. Pero, ang, ang, ang pagkaalam ko, by next year, guys, God willing, again, bubukas na some of the um, stations dyan sa subway. Uh, baka Makati daw or BGC and some of them will be open. But if you look at the map of the subway, it's going to cover huge parts of Metro Manila. And it's going to be a game changer. It's not going to make Philippines, I don't know, Sweden or Denmark overnight. You know, let's get realistic about that. But I think it will make a huge, huge difference. And, and you know, I, I, I look really forward. Yeah, Malaysia Smart Tunnel. Thank you, Sir, okay, Sir KG. So yeah, so you can look at actually other ASEAN and, and other tropical countries, you know, Latin America, Philippines, etc., na meron silang mga very smart uh, flood control systems. No? Kaya nga, sabi ko, maganda nga Japan yung gumawa. Uh, hindi yung ibang bansa. Now, let me be very uh, very clear about this. I've been to China. I've been to China multiple times. Hindi lang Hong Kong, uh, as in mainland China, as in Beijing, China, right? And I'll tell you what, China has a lot of impressive things there. Their infrastructure is impeccable. Uh, everything was QR code nung 2015, 2014 pa lang pumunta tayo dyan. Halos lahat ng tao, digital currency na. Uh, ngayon, China is a superpower sa automotive and EV industry. I'll give it to them. Um, and pagdating sa, sa super, uh, sa, sa mga train, from childhood, I already had experience of riding China-made subways. Pero sa ibang riyon ng mundo yan. Uh, and of course, uh, we also know, pag tinignan mo, may mga kaibigan tayo dyan na, nung nasa Washington D.C. ako two weeks ago, may nakausap tayo mga kaibigan dyan na, uh, na gumamit ng China-made uh, bullet train dyan sa Laos. 
Um, and I'm hearing pretty okay things naman dun sa ginawa ng China sa Bandung, Jakarta. So, so let's be absolutely clear. I think China could be a fantastic partner for the Philippines. China has a lot to offer. Yung talagang yung magnetic, yan nila, di ba? Yung technology nila sa subway, uh, sa, 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 sa bullet train nila. Para mas mabilis yata yung bullet train nila sa Japan pa, no? But obviously, I mean, my point with Japan is they started this. They were really ahead of everyone else. I did uh, bullet trains at Italy and Europe. Uh, so I, I, I did ride uh, railway systems in Germany, in Italy and other countries. But I would say iba pa rin yung Japan. But having said that, China has a lot to offer. So I'm all for more cooperation with China. Yes, maglev. Thank you, Sir Francisco, for that. Yes, maglev sila sa China. It's really impressive. It's really impressive. It's exactly on time. It's squeaky clean. Uh, beautiful, beautiful. I mean, you go to Laos. The most amazing thing there, aside from their fantastic heritage and all, is the China-made subway. Having said that, you cannot just be looking at the shiny surface. Like, for instance, in Bandung, Jakarta, uh, high-speed railway ng Indonesia, sobrang over-budget, sobrang matagal. I remember three years ago, you can check it on Nikkei Asia, among others, um, Indonesia was openly considering asking Japan back because they yung projects in China and Japan. But remember... Uh, President Xi Jinping, when he visited uh, Indonesia uh, in the 2010s, he made a strategic decision na yung gagawin nilang project sa Indonesia ay sobrang ganda ng terms of payment. So I think yung interest rate nun is like 1 to 2% lang. Because napaka mahalaga, ma- napaka mahalaga Indonesia. Yes, uh, levitating magnetic train. Yes, thank you so much. Maglev, maglev uh, to put it shortly. So yeah, yeah I mean, I, I, I know how impressive China is. And I have a lot of admiration for the Chinese civilization and all. Ang sinasabi ko lang dito guys, ay, hindi po uh, subway yung sa Laos guys. High speed, ano yan? Bullet train. Bullet train po siya. O oh, maliit lang kasi yung Vientiane. Eh. Um, uh, but it's a bullet train. It cuts through their big cities and all. But the, the, yung reklamo is usually, China makes a lot of fantastic projects but uh, they're overpriced. They, use, they mostly rely on Chinese technology, Chinese workers. And then you also have cases like Hambantuta Airport in Sri Lanka, known as the MTS airport on, in the world. Like, ang gandang airport, pero hindi, binas, in, hindi siya based on a proper economic feasibility study you know, assessment. No? So, what I'm saying is that I'm, I'm okay with dealing with China, but provided, hindi lang purong China ang mga workers, provided my, my technology sharing, technology transfer, provided my input din ng Philippines uh, engineering, because actually, China wants to also, in, um, China has been also trying to build, so yung Laos, ang plano nila, Laos, i-connect nila sa Thailand, and then pababa, i-connect nila sa Malaysia, and then Singapore, right? So yun yung plan. Pero yung Thailand kasi hindi pumapayag, na purong China lang yung worker, China yung technology and engineering, they want also Thai input. So I think we, we can learn something also from Thailand. So I'm all for cooperating with China to build it, but it has to make we have to make sure it's really mutually beneficial. Hindi lang yung mga Chinese company nagbe-benefit. And also, it's made under proper, proper, proper economic assessment, meaning yung interest rates, meaning yung terms of payment, uh, meaning uh, yung terms of contract, uh, walang wishy-washy, walang dodgy-dodgy, walang uh, NBNZTE, yung mga ganyang kalokohan, di ba? Because we had many bad experiences with China and the Philippines. At kasalanan din ng mga kurakot natin politiko. Mga kaila- kasalanan din ng mga treasonous na tao dyan. Now, speaking of dealing with China, speaking of dealing with China, kagabi guys, uh, I was just scrolling through things and 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 lumalabas na ngayon guys, before natin pag-usapan si Kibo Lloyd, because I'm, 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 uh, as we talk, we're waiting for even more updates on this. Um, Interestingly, guys, very interestingly, there is um, there is now a very, very public discussion uh, dito ukul sa umanoy secret deal ni Digong with China sa West Philippine Sea. Seryoso po ito dahil uh, this has huge implications. I mean, you can say see words like the, the T word could be used. And interestingly, no less than Erwin Tulfo, who's now number one in service to be the next senator, and of course, the Tulfos are now really in ascendancy, came out very strongly and said, dapat, dapat magkakaroon ng clarification si Digong, ano ba talaga itong sinasabi ng China, dahil may announcement ng China three days ago, earlier this week, na meron daw silang kasunduan with Digong, 
na na ano, wag wag ano yun, yung position natin sa yung insol. So essentially, oh, alam niyo na, alam niyo na this, alam niyo na this. Oh. So ito yung statement ni ni uh, ni Erwin Tulfo. And remember, the Tulfos are very good friend at this before of the Duterte's, right? Especially Erwin, you know, he has a very good relationship uh, with the Duterte's back in the day. So let's see, let's see here. Answer that kung meron bang ako kami privy uh, maging ang administrasyon po na ito. So maganda po siguro the former president will answer that kung meron bang kasunduan kasi I believe uh, before previously sinasabi nila wala din na nila yung isa yung insul na yan. So It will be better and the right person to ask Erwin Tulfo guys to, hindi Rafi Tulfo. So ito, so, so ulitin natin na, ito yung... Sir, that kung meron bang ako kami privy, uh, maging ang administrasyon po na ito, so maganda po siguro the former president will answer that kung meron bang kasunduan kasi I believe... Uh, before previously sinasabi nila, wala din na nila yung isa yung insul na yan, so... It would be better and the right person to ask that question and answer it is uh, yung dating pang... Okay, so clearly, nag-wash ng... Wala kami alam dyan, nag-ugas kamay na sila. At interesting, sinabi na even the current administration, meaning administration ni BBM, uh, walang uh, informasyon tungkol dito. So this looks like, a, well, allegedly, this looks like a secret deal na hindi na-inform yung incoming administration. Kasi remember guys, pag nanalo ang isang bagong administration, mayroon transition period. At doon sa transition period, dapat binibrief yung incoming administration, hindi lang incoming president, doon sa lahat ng mga major deals. Especially mga secret, uh, not mga secret, but confidential deals na ginagawa ng, uh, isang, uh, na ginawa ng isang outgoing president that will fall within the jurisdiction and mandate of an incoming president. Especially in matters concerning, guys, matters concerning national security, and foreign policy because ito ito yung area kung saan ang laki ng purview and ang laki ng room for maneuver ng 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 presidente so earlier this week finally itong China ay nagbooking na sino ang tinutukoy nila nung sinabi nila na meron silang agreement with an ex-Filipino president administration na dapat ang Pilipinas hindi i-fortify yung ating position Diyan sa Ayungin Insol. Remember guys, sa Ayungin Insol, uh, alam nyo na, yung, yung BRP Sierra Madre, medyo, uh, you know, medyo eyesore na, medyo grabe na yan. Di ba na, nagpa-fall apart na yan. So, uh, nangako ang Marcos administration at ating sandat, sandatan lakas na palakasin nila ang position natin dyan, pagandahin nila yung base natin dyan, yung facilities natin dyan. Uh, so, immediately nag-react ng China na bawal po yan or, uh, or hindi ito tugma dun sa kanilang kasunduan sa isang dating administration. Hindi nila na-clarify. So, kaya naalala niyo guys, immediately lumabas si JV Ercito at lumabas si Jingoy Estrada at sinabi nila hindi ito yung tatay nila. Because remember, it, it, it was Erap Estrada. I mean, for all of his huge faults, I'm definitely not a fan of Erap. Erap was the one who decided na, sige, i-ram na natin itong BRP Shermat, i-park na natin dyan para wala nang magyabang-yabang dyan. At least naisip ni Erap yan, di ba? Uh, uh, for all of his frailties and shortcomings and all. So, so na-clarify immediately ang mga Estrada brothers, the good one and the, well, not the good one, if how should, how should I put it, di ba? Na hindi si Erap Estrada ang nag-agree sa China na hindi palakasin yung position ng Pilipinas dyan sa West Philippines, particularly sa Ayungin Shoal. So immediately nag-fall ang suspicion, who's the next president? Not Aquino, obviously, Arroyo, kay President Arroyo. Because uh, kung maalala nyo, under President Arroyo, we had a number of big agreements with China. Kasama dyan yung NBNZT na talagang sangkot sa yan, right and left corruption cases. No? Kasama din dyan yung North Railway, uh, North, uh, North Railway Project na na deem unconstitutional by the Philippine Supreme Court later on dahil uh, ito ay nag-violate ng uh, bidding procedures. So dodgy, corrupt, problematic. But most importantly, si Arroyo ay nag-sign ng Joint Maritime Seismic Undertaking sa West Philippine Sea kung saan ang Pilipinas, Vietnam at China ay nag-agree na jointly mag-explore sila ng mga oil and gas resources dyan sa mga parte ng West Philippine Sea. And that agreement had clauses may mga parte dyan, may mga provision dyan na confidentiality. Na dapat hindi ito mas scrutinize ng mga ibang stakeholders, including ibang branches of the Philippine state. That was highly problematic. 
And that's why eventually the JMSU was taken to the Supreme Court and last year my ruling na unconstitutional yung JMSU na ginawa ni Arroyo. So immediately, immediately, that raised suspicion na baka ito yung sinasabi ng China na hindi pala kasing yung position ng Pilipinas ayong insyol ay sa ilalim ni Arroyo. Dahil si Erap ay yung medyo siga-siga, si Arroyo ay napaka-friendly sa China. So baka si Arroyo yun. But President Arroyo also made it clear na hindi siya yun. Yung mga kanyang uh, opisyalis dati na, 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 na nandito pa rin, ay na, clarify na hindi sila yan. So the suspicion uh, would fall naturally on Digong. But the Digong camp have been uh, denying this for quite some time until binoking sila ng China mismo. So ngayon, ito yung news. Inis na inis ang Department of Foreign Affairs of Philippines. Inis na inis ang, uh, ang, 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 ang administrasyon natin. Inis na inis na rin ang, 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 ang kongreso. No? At ang uh, ating mga otoridad sa iba't ibang branches of the government dahil mukhang uh, hindi sila informed. As you could hear from, um, from Erwin Tulfo, they're not privy to the details of this this deal, whatever deal, the secret deal that, that China has been talking about. So, ano, ano to? Diba? Ano to? Diba? Very suspicious too, guys. What's going on here? Diba? So, let me just uh, read itong, ano, ha? itong uh, news and analysis. So, so, galit na galit ang Department of Foreign Affairs kasi ang China po ay nagbubuking ng potentially sensitive details, no? Uh, ukol sa mga negotiations nila with the Philippines in the past. Of course, ginagawa ng China yan for propaganda reasons para maging mukha silang sila pa yung tama o sila pang victim. Ganun naman parati eh. Mga kung sinong bully, kung sinong ano, siya pang victim. ba? Diba? Uh, so, ang kiniklaim ng China is wala silang maling ginagawa. Yung ginagawa lang nila is uh, they're just uh, implementing yung kanilang kasunduan with the Duterte administration. Right? So it turns out Beijing had been operating on a different reality. Ito yung sa report na ito. I'll post it later. Not just on how they see features in the West Philippines or the status of relations between Philippines and all. It says Beijing had wanted, quote, some understanding and acquiescence in trying to negotiate with the Philippines under Duterte administration. Ito ay ayon sa isang report sa Manila Times, quoting a Chinese official. Uh, ayon sa report na to, China wanted the Philippines to, quote, commit not to transport large-scale building materials to reinforce the Sierra Madre. Ito yung sinasabi ko kanina, na ayon sa China, nangako ang, ang Duterte administration, na hindi nila palakasin yung ating position dyan sa Ayungin Shoal, even if itong BRP Sierra Madre ay bumibigay na. Bumibigay na. I mean, tignan naman itsura ng BRP Sierra Madre. Diba, nagkaroon tayo ng isang malaking vlog dyan na, na sobrang nakaka-frustrate na naman ganun na kalagyan. In fairness naman, at least my effort, at least naman my effort ang kasalukoy ng administration, na medyo ayos, ayusin ito. At kaya naman gawin yan. I, I, I know, you know, I talk to people who know what they're talking about. At sabi nila, pwede naman ayusin yan ng maayos-ayos lang. Uh, you know, huwag din tayo maingay. Um, so, ang sinasabi ng China, ay, wala kayong karapatan mag-ayos yan. Kasi nangako si Digong eh. Nangako yung Digong administration na hindi nyo ayusin yan. So, gigiba na yan. Hintay nyo lang gigiba yan. And then, ano, ano mag-ano tayo? Magbabardagulan na tayo dyan? Parang crazy, di ba? Crazy, di ba? Um, so, again ha, Pakita ko lang sa inyo yung mga hindi nakakita, pwede na may Google din yan na napaka-grabe, di ba? Yung yung uh, situation sa BRP Sierra Madre. Talagang bibigay na yan. In fact, may mga eksperto na nagsabi, uh, may mga na-interview tayo dati na uh, parang shock sila na hanggang ngayon andun pa rin ito. So hindi na lang ko dahil sa pandemic yan. So guys, ito yung itsura, di ba? Ito yung itsura, guys. Grabe, di ba? Kitang-kita niyo talaga na hopeless case yan. If you leave it to the elements it will be overtaken by the elements. Diba? Grabe, diba? Tingnan niyo naman, guys. Diba? Grabe, grabe yung tsura, diba? Grabe yung tsura. So, actually, the expectation was 2-3 years ago, wala na, gigiba na yan. So, mapipilitan na tayo mag-exit dyan. And then, pwede na pumasok ang China. So, siguro, yun ang calculation ng China. At akala nila, Duterte pa rin yung presidente natin. Akala nila si BBM ay magtututa-tuta lang. Ayan, hindi. Hindi nangyari yung, yung in-expect nila. Ayan, visit sila. Ayan, inis na inis sila ngayon. So, ang sinasabi nila, oh, bakit, 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 hindi kayo katulad na, ay mga katulad, alam niya na, may nakita na naman silang bakanteng lupa dyan, baka naman, pwede natin gawin na niya, no? <laughs> sabi ng China, bakit, bobo ba tayo, di ba sinabi niya sa amin na, hindi niya isin yan, o, oh, ganun, kinakaren tayo ng China ngayon, kinakaren tayo ng China ngayon, so, malaking issue yan, guys, so, kung totoo na talaga may agreement na ganun si B, eh, ni Duterte, 
And binubuking na sila ng China ngayon at base dito sa report ng Manila Times. Alam niyo naman, Manila Times. Um, uh, then, uh, kailangan natin tignan na mabuti yan because that means dodgy, dodgy stuff happen. O baka naman, may bakante na <laughs> o, Alam niyo na, alam niyo na. O, hindi ko na mag... Wag na natin ano yun, wag na natin itag. O, so ito, ah, Department of Foreign Affairs, nung earlier this week, sinabi nila, uh, sinabi nila earlier this week na, na ito, 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 hindi, hindi maayos yung ganyan start. So sabi ng DFA, from the outset, the DFA wishes to underscore that the Philippines is approaching this fund, this confidential negotiations. So, bakit binubuking ng China yan? E eh, confidential dapat yan, di ba? And then, Para sa akin nga, hindi lang yan. Wait lang, may ginawa si Digong na hindi niya sinisabi sa susunod na administration. So ito sabi nila, These are confidential negotiations with utmost sincerity and good faith. We were therefore surprised by China's disclosure of sensitive details of our bilateral discussions. Right? One proposal raised by Chinese Vice Foreign Minister Sun Waidong back in March 2023 meant, quote, actions that would be deemed as acquiescence or recognition of China's control and administrative administration over the Ayung Insul as a Chinese Chinese territory. Uh, so meron daw gentleman's agreement. So medyo booking na hindi siguro hindi talaga babae involved. Uh, as Ayung Insul is part of the exclusive zone of the Philippines, the proposal of China could not be considered by the Philippines without violating the Philippine constitution or international law ayon sa DFA. So sabi nila, anong pinagsasabi ng gentleman's agreement? Ano ba to? Ito naman ito yung ano, eh, mga usapang kan- sa tambay kanto. Oh, pare, ako nang bahala dyan sa ano. Ha? Oh, pare, sige, ikaw na. Bahala. Hindi pwedeng ganun. Pinag-usapan natin dito, guys, ay, ay ano, national interest. Teritorya ng bansa natin. Seryosong bagay po ang pinag-usapan natin. Hindi pwede gentleman's agreement, gentleman's agreement na yan. So ayon sa DFA sa Pilipinas, while a few proposals were deemed somewhat workable, Many of the remaining Chinese proposals were determined after careful study, scrutiny, and deliberation within the Philippine government to be contrary to our national interest. Meaning, kung nag-agree ka sa, agree- sa mga proposal ng China na yan, then essentially, you're violating the Philippine national interest. May tinatawag dyan, I think, um, treason, to put it nicely, if you agree to those kinds of agreements. Now, to be fair, we have to still hear from from um, from from the Duterte camp kung nag-agree talaga sila dito or yung China since nagbubuking na naman sila ng mga kalokohan na ginagawa nila dati at panahon ni Digong eh di pakita nila Digong ay ng China kung nag-sign ang mga Duterte administration officials dito sa agreement na yan basang DFA ay naghugas kamay at sinabi nila nag-negotiate kami nag-usap kami pero hindi kami nag-agree dun sa mga sinisabi nilang proposal kasi hindi ito tugma sa, sa interes ng ating bayan ito ay to put it nicely, they should have said it. This is treasonous, the way if we did that. Right? You're essentially giving up the Philippine claim in the area. Remember, ang ayong insyol po ay hindi territory. It's just a low tide elevation that falls within our continental shelf and exclusive economic zone. So parang extension din siya ng ating territory in that sense. So this is a very, very interesting development, mga kameta. So that's why I'm saying you cannot look at the Kiboloy issue. So now we're transitioning here. 